after Michael Savage leaves us at the bottom of the hour. We're going to go to break and come back uh, with Michael Savage to talk about currently what's happening, the dirty tricks he thinks they're going to play, uh, and how we counter them, and then how we would restore this country if a Donald J. Trump gets in. Uh, so when it, you talk about deplorables, I've been attacked by name. Um, I know that uh, the, the vice presidential candidate attacked me again and said I'm one of the top deplorables. But I tell you, we're talking to maybe the king deplorable when we come back, according to the globalists, the leftists, the scum, the communists, the socialists, the New World Order people, because Michael Savage has been one of the chief thorns in their side for decades. So we're going to ask one of the top deplorables where he thinks this is going and how we defeat them straight ahead. The book that's just now coming out is Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama, Michael Savage, number one New York Times bestseller. And you can go to michaelsavage.wnd.com. And we'll also give you his website on the other side, michaelsavage.com, the home of the Savage Nation, borders, language, culture. All this and more, Scorched Earth, now available. I'm Alex Jones. This is the InfoWar. You can find us at infowars.com. Well, I got to tell you, there's probably three people in the last few decades that have been on the front lines of fighting globalism and getting made fun of it. Uh, that's Michael Savage, Alex Jones, and Matt Drudge. And I guess we're all here today because I'm told he just talked to Drudge, and Drudge is tuned in right now. Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama, Michael Savage. Very powerful book. Just got it today. Been thumbing through it. I'm a big history buff. Cannot wait to read this book. We need to make this number one on the New York Times bestseller list. It is a manifesto against the globalists that have literally taken this country and Europe over. Brexit is only the beginning. The globalists are panicking in every major publication they run. Uh, the Economist, the New York Times, uh, the Washington Post saying that if Trump defeats Hillary, the New World Order is basically uh, broke back. So we are in the title match of history. Everyone should go to bookstores to make this the number one book, buy it in bookstores everywhere today, Scorched Earth. This is the front lines of the info war. Joining us for the next uh, 20 minutes or so is Michael Savage of the Savage Nation, one of the top radio shows in the country, New York Times bestselling author. Uh, you've got the floor, my friend. Let's talk about where we are, what we're facing, two minutes to midnight. Well, number one, you are, you are really the field marshal of it all, Alex. Come on, we know that they're more afraid of you and InfoWars than almost anyone else in the media. I mean, you, Matt Trudge, there aren't too many left. That's what's worrisome, isn't it, Alex? And you were named by this evil machine specifically. And I would say that, you know, you say hyperbole and this and that. We are one bad election away from losing everything, which is on the back of my book cover. And I don't know that we can recover from Obama's scorched earth policies. We know he's trampled the Constitution. And I don't know how any of your listeners, you know, whatever the side they're on, you know, you know, and I know you get all the opposition listening. And I'd like all of the good progressives who listen to Alex to see if they can nail him to a cross. Tell me that one of these things has not magnified under this Cretan in the White House. Is this not becoming a third world nation of terror? Check. Yes. Riots. Check. Black Lives Matter. Mobs. Check. Black Lives Matter. Chaos. Check. Barack Obama. Terror, riots, mobs, and chaos. This is a novelty in American history. I haven't seen anything like this historically since the 60s. And before that, when was the last time you've seen America like this? And the beauty of all of this, Alex, is how he's gotten away with it. Because you've got to give him credit. Barry Obama is the slickest salesman of communism the world has ever, ever discovered. No screaming, no yelling, no threats. Just a, a silk smooth, good-looking, nice guy with a lovely wife and children, selling the most evil poison the world has ever, ever been asked to ingest. And look how far he's gotten. And every time he gets away with another outrage against this nation, he raises the stakes like a junkie. He needs a higher dose of insult in order to maintain the high. Am I wrong, Alex? You're dead on, Mr. Savage. Dr. Savage, please continue. So the question is, okay, I'm, I'm complaining about him. I'm saying she's worse, which is true, which is ludicrous. She says America wants change from what? From the same policies she's going to continue? She's suddenly not a progressive lunatic? When, wait a minute. She's going to change Obama's policies in which way? Make them worse? 
how she can't go the other way, uh, then she'd be Donald Trump. So it means she's going to make it even worse than him. That's if she remembers what she's supposed to do. And that's doubtful, as you well know, because she doesn't know how many times she fainted. Uh, so the point is, how do we uncouple this insanity? It is going to be really hard. You know and I know there was a UAC in the 1950s, and it's a dirty word of the most dirty of words, the House of Un-American Activities Committee, which was run by one of the great American patriots, Senator McCarthy. He has been completely decimated by the left. McCarthy was a tail gunner in World War II, one of the most dangerous positions you could ever have in an airplane, right? Belly gunner, B-24. Easiest missions. target was the tail. That's what they attacked. Listen what the left did to him. They called him, they mocked him and called him Tail Gunner Joe. In other words, they took his heroism and tried to turn it into a mockery. That was in the 50s, Alex, to show you who they were already, the communists. So what was McCarthy saying, this great war hero? He was saying that Hollywood had been in, infiltrated by communists. The journalists had been infiltrated by communists. Academia had been infiltrated by communists. And the government itself. Well, what happened was they had the hearings. They ruined him. They destroyed the man. And then what happened in the 1990s, I'm sure you remember the book, the Venona Papers came out. It was a, a Soviet... Russian publication. Turned out it was all true. The Russian documents came out. And it was worse than what McCarthy was saying. Worse. It confirmed who in Hollywood, who in academia, who in government was, in fact, an operative of the Soviet Union. So there were subversives. UAC was exactly on target. I say the only way we can save this nation is not talking about it, but by rooting out the subversives in the United States of America. And I know many libertarians are afraid of this for fear that it will turn on them. Well, let's put that fear aside for the moment. In fact, let me just add this since you're saying this, because this is a point I want to make. If you look at the globalists, if you look at their leftists, they're saying the alt-right can't be tolerated. They're saying we need to be shut down and arrested. Hillary says she's going to shut down Breitbart. That means Drudge, you. They say they're bringing back fairness doctrine. They say they're coming after us. They're run by this foreign globalist Soros. Russia's already kicked him out. These are foreign globalists here overthrowing our country so under the constitution these aren't even citizens they don't have the rights they're here overthrowing the system to survive we must go on the offensive we must root them out it's the only way to ever beat them they are criminals they are subversives they are Saul Alinsky pledging to Lucifer please continue yeah they want to lynch all of us if not electronically then physically and the fact of the matter is they have names these are not nameless faceless organizations the number one and the worst of them all, in my humble opinion, is the ACLU. The Anti-Christian Liberties Union is the number one. They're the head of the snake. Now, the man behind all of it is George Soros, the most evil man on the planet, in my estimation. The absolutely most evil person the world has seen in modern times. You know, you don't have to hang people, electrocute them, put them in cages. You don't have to do the things that ISIS is doing to be evil. He's evil on a larger scale than the ISIS executioners are because he's gutting the United States of America. He's trampling on our Constitution. He helped fund the, the Arab Spring. He helped fund the Arab Spring. Hillary, all of them. Amen. And I keep saying she owns it. He was the one who, who, by the way, he funded it. But you know who was the architect the best I can put together? Was Zbigniew Brzezinski, That's Jimmy right. Carter's national security advisor. Brzezinski was the architect. Soros was the financier. Hillary Clinton was the publicist and an actor, along with John Kerry. I'd say she, she was the quarterback with Kerry and Obama. She destroyed the Middle East. She owns that. How does the media, forget the media, why doesn't Trump put her on a cross with that and one? And by the way, Mr. It's Savage, Dr. Savage, that's not hyperbole. She literally destabilized 20-something countries that Al-Qaeda and ISIS are running around. Hundreds of thousands of dead Christians. They won't even let Christians out of the region. It's, it, it, these people are demons, just like the true liberal Assange said, look, I've got the documents. The press is dead if she gets in. Our necks are in nooses. She's a demon. You must stop her. I hear you, and I also saw who wrote the other day that Obama, the nice, slick, smooth, nice family man, has created the greatest surveillance state in the history of the world. And suddenly liberals are afraid of it because they understand what happens when the guillotine uh, stops, starts falling. First, it takes out your opposition. But as, um, as the world learned during the French Revolution, the, the guillotine has an unlimited taste for blood. And it doesn't stop with the enemies of the revolution. Then they turn on their own kind and start executing their own so-called so, so counter-revolutionaries. 
as was done in the Soviet Union. Always happens. As was done in, as was done in Cuba, as was done in Hitler's Germany. They killed their own. The brown shirts. And the, the guillotine keeps falling and cuts heads. It is the most thirsty instrument on earth. And that's why the left ought to step up and shut their fat mouths when we stand up to these monsters. These monsters need to be stopped or we're all finished, left, right, and center. That's right. So how do we stop them? Your book, I just got it, incredible, gets into the blueprint, sir, with your incredible historical understanding. How do we beat these bastards? Because they know we've got them in a the corner now, but what tricks are they going to play? And then if we get Trump in, the battle just begins. What do we do? Oh, you said the magic words. If Trump wins, the battle begins because we know he is surrounded by neocons. We see that. I was shocked to read yesterday he hired Woolsey. Yeah. Woolsey? The head, former head of the CIA under Bill Clinton is now going to be his CIA director. So I laid in bed last night. He said, wait a minute, what is this about? And I said, well, you know, the CIA is a complicated organization. I mean, you need not, someone who knows how to run it, right? But look at Woolsey's track record. How could he join it as a senior advisor? Why him? Isn't there a returning combat veteran who worked in military intelligence that would have been a better choice? Some higher up American citizen patriot. Somebody like General head Flynn. Up the CIA under Trump. Why Woolsey? Why Foggy Bottom all over again? Okay, but Alex, I, I don't want to waste your no, time. No, please take over. Well, the way to defeat the enemy is to know your enemy. The way to know your enemy is to name the enemy. So who who are the subversive organizations who have who have destroyed and are destroying our civil liberties? We know the ACLU. We know the Southern Poverty Law Center. Oh, yeah. We know CARE. In my opinion, those are the three top of them. But I want to read to you all the others. Can I do that? Please. Because I made a whole list in, in Scorched Earth. I, I studied the cockroaches. And I said, let's bring them into the light and expose them. Make them scatter like cockroaches when you turn on the light. The request I am making, Alex Jones, and to all your listeners, is this. Name subversive organizations. As organizations you consider to be so far off the ideal of the American way that they are, in fact, subversive. And what does that mean? That means they spend all of their resources going against the wishes of the Constitution and the taxpayer. So who are they? I have a list. They're right here. Who are these organizations? They're trying to conquer us. They've done a pretty good job so far. They see us as deplorable because we just want to be free. National Lawyers Guild. Who are they? One of the most dangerous activist groups in the nation. Every time there was a riot by Black Thugs Matter at an anti-police protest, the scum in the National Lawyers Guild sold out, sent out their deranged psychotic lawyers from the worst law schools in America to make sure the police could not do their jobs. Every last shyster in the National Lawyers Guild is the type of lawyer that you have come to hate in plain English. Now, of course, they will argue that they're just for the underdog, that they're there for the poor immigrant and the oppressed minority. Well, you know what? I don't buy it. I want a lawyer's guild for the tax-paying middle class, Alex, not a lawyer's guild for the subversives who are bringing in refugees, immigrants, whatever you want to call them by the tens of millions. And we have the Soros emails where he admits it's to destabilize the country. Uh, he admits destabilization. H who admitted that? George Soros in the, in, in, in the latest DC leaks and others. He's, he's in there admitting that it's a plan to overthrow Europe and the U.S. and create racial strife. Correct. Alliance for Democracy. Um, Amnesty International, Black Lives Matter, Center for American Progress, Center for Media and Democracy. I'll read a few of them. Center for Science and the Public Interest, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics. I have two pages that I researched, Alex, in my book. Is Media Matters and David Brock in there? Um, they're, they're all over the place. You name these organizations, it's like a spider web. Rockefeller Brothers Foundation, Blue Moon Fund. Things you never heard of. Ford Foundation. Joyce Foundation. Joyce Foundation. Who ever heard of the Joyce Foundation? HKH Foundation. Dolan Charitable Trust. Vanguard Foundation. Archer Foundation. Solinsky's Back of the Yards Community Council. National Hip Hop Political Convention. Cuban Council of Churches. People don't even know these organizations. These cockroaches are crawling all over us, devouring our flag of liberty, Al. You're absolutely right, and they admit they want to collapse us and our borders into a world government. Dr. Savage, when you say the battle just begins, and, and I say that if Trump gets in, and I'm not counting our chickens yet, I mean, uh, why do you say the battle just begins? We just lost to Skype. Skype is a wondrous thing when it has its issues. Ladies and gentlemen, this is so historical.
The establishments control the left and the right to bring in globalism, but they're making their worldwide takeover with the left. And this is not a liberal group. Liberal means lower taxes, more freedom, more control locally. This is not liberal. They call themselves liberal. They have the moral high ground. The Republican establishment is working with them in a big, big way. The book is Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama, Michael Savage. We're listeners supported by you, our main sponsor, the listeners. We have Hillary for President Shirts at cost, $9.95. That includes uh, the shipping, $9.95. $9.95 shipping and the shirt all together. That funds the operation. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com for our supplements. Uh, but get the book, Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama, Michael Savage. Get it in stores so that it becomes basically an end cap and a bestseller to educate people that are not aware of what's happening. Because that's Michael Savage's real skill, I found. That's something I'm able to do as well. Most of these mainline right-wingers can't do it because they're just following a script. Is that he's able to get leftists, a lot of them that mean well, out of their cocoon. And it, and uh, uh, Dr. Savage continuing with the subversive organizations in the, in the five, six minutes we have left. You promise to come back next week if your voice isn't out. I really appreciate you to do, to do more and talk about the campaign. But hitting some of these other areas, her health, her cover-up, the mainstream uh -huh. media's ratings imploding, uh, them trying to start all these new wars. Uh, Russia, I'm not lionizing Putin, but he's bringing back nationalism. He's arrested and thrown out all the Soros people as subversive. I mean, just all the crazy things happening. It seems there's a quickening. Do you agree with that? And what does this signify? <laughs> What you just said, you, you explained it better than I could, Alex. I mean, you see the global picture. Uh, the fact is, which one do you want me to talk about? Anyone you, know, you want. Take, just, I mean, the top, your uh, top uh, things. I'll talk about something that in the middle of us talking about and me listing all the subversive organizations that I researched in Scorched Earth. Did you notice what happened? We lost the connection that my Skype dropped. Did you catch that one? It's crazy. It's such, well, they admit Google's all game. The Internet's game. They admit they're blocking terms for searching on Hillary. They admit they're censoring uh, patriot groups in Europe that criticize open borders. It's crazy. You mentioned a key word there, Google. For weeks, I've been railing against the monopolies that have emerged in America under Obama, the dictator. Google, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, of course, had been there before. Look at these companies. They're violating the antitrust statutes of the United States legal system. There is an antitrust division of the U.S. Justice Department that does not touch Mark Zuckerberg, does not touch the Google boys, does not touch Bill Gates. And there's a reason, because they all support the globalist New World Order agenda. They support it to the nth degree. And I've been screaming that when Trump becomes president, he must reactivate and use the Justice Department to break up these monopolies and give other people a chance to build a business. And I make a, a point of Teddy Roosevelt, who was a populist, as you well know, and his campaign slogan was, bust the trusts. The trusts in his day were Standard Oil, Rockefeller's Railroads, an oil company, company that dominated railroads and dominated the oil business. They didn't give anyone a chance of emerging. If they did, they crushed it. And it's the same globalist grandkids today that are running globalism. Zuckerberg, $58 billion isn't enough for that pig. He needs to cut the wages of American workers and throw them out of the country and bring in Indians to work for one third the wage. God bless India. God bless their intelligence. God bless India. But we got to look out they, for they, us a little bit. They, they belong in India. Let them, let them rebuild their own economy and let them hire IT workers at a right, at a right salary. So, yeah, you want to talk about jobs. Why do you think, no, not you, I'm talking well, rhetorically. Listen, sure. Why do you think Trump is surging amongst the blue-collar, disenfranchised white male? Why? Because they've been dumped upon. They've been stepped upon. The Eddies, whose grandfathers defeated Hitler, the Eddies, whose fathers died in the jungles of Vietnam, are being crapped upon by these vermin, these cowardly vermin, these sick, deviant perverts. I can't stand it. I'll get worked up, and I don't want to. I'm trying not to, Alex. This is the first interview I've done wow. for this book. Thank you. And Alex, I got to tell you, you're, the, you're on the front lines. You're going to be around a lot longer than I am in the media and probably on this planet. And you're doing the job that needs to be done. And all I can say is, as the time comes to an end right here, when I say that Obama and the left are practicing a scorched earth policy, there's a reason for it. When an army retreated in the past, they burnt everything to the ground. They burnt the crops. They killed the livestock. They burned the barns. They burned earth. the houses. Is that... Not what's going on here with this left when they see an ascendant right and ascendant American. That's patriot. right. They're blowing it all up. They're burning our. They're burning our pathways to survival. They're burning our internet. They want to burn 
radio. They want to burn any access. They're trying to, to start a race war. They're saying kill the cops. They're getting away with everything. I keep saying Soros gave them seventy million dollars to those street thugs. All we need now is Obama to uh, turn them into his well-funded private army. He can deputize them and give them government arms as he did ISIS. And then you will have the young pioneers of the Soviet Union. You will have the Red Brigades. You will have the Red Brigades of communist China frightening everybody in the society uh, on a daily basis. Alex, we're that close to it all coming to that. Obama is not finished yet. He has several months left yet to burn it all down, Alex. I agree. We've only got a minute left then. In your gut, you're a smart cookie, Dr. Savage. What do you expect them to pull? Remember what George Bush did in the last few months of his regime? I was screaming and warning George Bush is a fiscal socialist. He's not through yes. Do you remember the housing yes. crisis that followed? I expect that if it looks like Trump is going to win or, or, or Grandma falls off the stage again for good and they replace her with uh, uh, Freddie from one of the Nightmare movies, Kane, who can't win, uh, I expect the worst. I expect them calling off the election. I expect martial law. I expect if that is not possible, I expect a financial, complete financial breakdown to create even further chaos. That's what I expect. I concur with that. So every uh, person, very race, color, and creed that wants to live in a somewhat free country now be involved, spread the word, expose these people. They're all over the news pushing the idea of suspending the election now because of Hillary. Oh. Uh, the book, Scorched Earth, in bookstores all over the country. Uh, Michael Savage, michaelsavage.com. Thank you so much for spending so much uh, time with us today. we got about 45 seconds. Final point. There is no final point. The nation is wrecked right now. It's going to be unredeemably destroyed unless the Republican candidate wins. And I keep saying Republican candidate now because if I say the word Trump, people turn off. There are so many anti-Trump fake conservatives out there that the minute you say Trump, they go into overdrive. So say the Republican candidate. That makes it a little easier for them to, to recognize that there is a choice. Right They're really now. showing themselves as operatives, aren't they? Oh, all the people who hate Alex Jones and Michael Savage, who are true blue conservatives, who are they? Who are they, uh, Alex? We don't even need to say their names because they've destroyed themselves. That's the good news. They're losing the war. They've revealed themselves. The fight's now out in the open. And, and Dr. Savage, my gut tells me we're going to win in the end. What do you think? Well, with men like Glenn Beck rubbing his face in cornflakes, who was obviously <laughs> a very... And you look at him putting his face in cornflakes... <laughs> The man is obviously a very disturbed individual who was never on on any solid ground. And I have said before, liberalism is a mental disorder. You, sir, are absolutely right. You've charted the course. God bless you. We're Thank you, Michael March. Savage. Get the book, yeah, folks. Thanks, Alex. Incredible interview.